afternoon. I'm Amy Moskovitz. I'm the Reference Manager at Haverford Township Free Library, and I'm here this afternoon for Wine and Words Wednesday. And since it is April 15th today, it is the middle of National Poetry Month. So I'm here today to share with you some poetry about spring. Um, it is a beautiful spring day outside. The birds are chirping outside my window and the sun is shining. I hope that you're having a glass of your favorite wine and that you are enjoying the beautiful spring day as well. I have some of my favorite spring poems here that I'm going to share with you. So sit back, relax, enjoy your favorite glass of wine and enjoy Wine and Words Wednesday. The first poem that I'm going to share with you today is by E.E. E. Cummings. It is called Spring is Like a Perhaps Hand. And as you may know about E.E. E. Cummings, he was famous for writing in um, a very interesting format. And because the format was so interesting, I'm going to read it in the format in which it was intended. So you may hear some interesting um, formatting in my speech. And that's because I'm going to read it in the format in which it was written. This is Spring is Like a Perhaps Hand by E.E. E. Cummings. Hi, Lisa. Thank you for joining us today. Spring is like a perhaps hand, which comes carefully out of nowhere, arranging a window into which people look while people stare, arranging and changing, placing carefully, there, a strange thing and a known thing here and changing everything carefully. Spring is like a perhaps hand in a window, carefully to and fro moving new and old things while people stare carefully, moving and perhaps fraction of flower here, placing, an inch of air there, and without breaking anything. That was Spring is Like a Perhaps Hand by E.E. E. Cummings. Hi, Diane, welcome to Wine and Words Wednesday. I hope that everybody is enjoying their glass of wine today while we listen to some spring poetry on this beautiful spring day. Our next poem is by Marilyn Singer. It's called April is a Dog's Dream. Uh, this is a fun little poem that I found that I think that you'll enjoy. April is a dog's dream. The soft grass is growing. The sweet breeze is blowing. The air full of singing feels just right. So no excuses now. We're going to the park to chase and charge and chew. And I will make you see what spring is all about. Our next poem is called Instructions on Not Giving Up. Lisa in the comments wrote, spring is my favorite season and these poems are just perfect. Thank you, Lisa. Spring is one of my favorite seasons too. Our next poem is called Instructions on Not Giving Up. It's by Ada Lamone. Ada Lamone is the author of Bright Dead Things, which was a finalist for the National Book Award back in, I believe, 2015. Um, and this is one of her poems called Instructions on Not Giving Up. Um, this is, I think, a really timely poem for right now, not just because it's a spring poem, but because um, many of us might feel a little bit melancholy because of everything that's been going on. Um, so this reminds us to not give up and that feeling that spring brings um, after the winter, um, that feeling that, um, you know, the plants and the flowers and the trees don't give up, so neither should we. This is Instructions on Not Giving Up by Ada Lamone. More than the fuchsia funnels breaking out of the crabapple tree, 
more than the neighbor's almost obscene display of cherry limbs shoving their cotton candy colored blossoms to the slate sky of spring rains. It's the greening of the trees that really gets to me. When all of the shock of white and taffy, the world's baubles and trinkets, leave the pavement strewn with the confetti of aftermath, the leaves come, patient, plodding, a green skin growing over what winter did to us, a return to the strange idea of continuous living despite the mess of us, the hurt, the empty. Fine then, I'll take it, the tree seems to say, a new slick leaf unfurling like a fist to an open palm, I'll take it all. I thought that that was beautiful in what it's saying. The next poem that I have to offer this afternoon is actually by D.H. Lawrence. Um, many of us know D.H. Lawrence as a novelist, but D.H. Lawrence was actually known for his poetry when he began writing. Um, his first published works were actually poems way back in 1909. Um, so I found that to be a really interesting fact. I'm glad I'm looking through the comments. I'm glad that Diane and uh, Lisa also like the poems that I'm reading. Thank you. This is a D.H. Lawrence poem called The Enkindled Spring. This spring as it comes bursts up in bonfires green, wild puffing of emerald trees and flame-filled bushes, thorn blossom lifting in wreaths of smoke between where the wood fumes up and the watery flickering rushes. I am amazed at this spring, this conflagration of green fires lit on the so soil of the earth, this blaze of growing and sparks that puff in wild gyration, faces of people streaming across my gaze. And I, what foundation of fire am I among this leaping combustion of spring? My spirit is tossed about like a shadow buffeted in the throng of flames, a shadow that's gone astray and is lost. So that is D.H. Lawrence, the poet, as opposed to D.H. Lawrence, the novelist. Our next poem comes to you from Billy Collins, the famous poet Billy Collins. Many of us know him. This is one of my favorite Billy Collins poems called Today. And I'd like to talk about some of the features of this poem after we read it. But I'd like you first just to listen carefully to Today by Billy Collins. If ever there were a spring day so perfect, so uplifted by a warm intermittent breeze, that it made you want to throw open all the windows in the house, and unlatch the door to the canary's cage, indeed rip the little door from its jam. A day when the cool brick paths and the garden bursting with peonies seemed so etched in sunlight that you feel like taking a hammer to the glass paperweight on the living room end table, releasing the inhabitants from their snow-covered cottage so they could walk out holding hands and squinting into this larger dome of blue and white. Well, today is just that kind of day. I really love this Billy Collins poem. Uh, I think that it has really beautiful imagery. Um, one of the, my favorite things about it is that he mixes the beautiful imagery about the day um, talking about the warm intermittent breeze, the perfect day, um, talking about the garden bursting with peonies with some somewhat violent and aggressive imagery of ripping open the canary's door and taking a hammer to the paperweight. Um, so he kind of 
mixes the hard and soft, kind of the yin and yang in his poem, um, which I found really interesting upon reading it. Um, upon first reading it, um, it hit me, you know, the softer imagery, especially um, the image of the inhabitants of the paperweight walking out into the sunlight and walking out, you know, maybe escaping from the paperweight, um, which seemed to be a snow globe uh, where they've lived and being able to walk out into the warmth of spring um, and how glorious that must be. But then upon reading it again, you know, you see that he talks about ripping the door off the cage and uh, taking a hammer to the paperweight <laughs> and having to hammer it open um, and, you know, ripping the little door off of its jam uh, to get the canary out of its cage. So he, he brings in some violent imagery into this glorious, you know, warm, lovely spring day, which I found really interesting. And um, Diane in the comments agrees with me. She said, I didn't quite know where he was going with that hammer. <laughs> um, so that's, that brings, you know, some life to these poems, which is so interesting. Our next poem is um, The Yellow Violet by William Cullen Bryant. Um, pay attention in here for some deeper meaning. Um, a poem that seems to be just about a flower is not just about a flower. So pay attention to that as I'm reading. When beechen buds begin to swell and woods the bluebirds warbles know, the yellow violet's modest bell peeps from last year's leaves below. Ere russet fields their green resume, sweet flower I love in forest bare, to meet thee when thy faint perfume alone is in the virgin air. Of all her train, the hands of spring First plant thee in the watery mold, and I have seen thee blossoming beside the snowbank's edges cold. Thy parents' son, who bade thee view pale skies and chilling moisture sip, has bathed thee in thy own bright hue and streaked with jet thy glowing lip. Yet slight thy form and low thy seat, and earthward bent thy gentle eye, up apt the passing view to meet when loftier flowers are flaunting nigh. Oft in the sunless April day, thy earthly smile hath stayed my walk, but midst the gorgeous blooms of May, I pass thee on thy humble stalk. So they who climb to wealth forget, the friends in darker fortunes tried. I copied them, but I regret that I should ape the ways of pride. And when again the genteel hour awakens the painted tribes of light, I'll not o'erlook the modest flower that made the woods of April bright. So originally, yes, <laughs> he's talking about the flower but he's talking about other things as well. The last poem that I have for us today, before we close, is one of my favorites that I had found for us. I'm leaving what I think is one of the best for last. This is called April Midnight by Arthur Simons. Um, I had the great joy of being able to go to London a few years back and one of my favorite memories of London was strolling around the streets late at night um, and just walking around after all of the tourist attractions were closed and just strolling around with uh, the people that I went there with and just really just roaming the streets and seeing the sights uh, in the dark. And that's what this poem reminded me of. I wasn't there in April, um, but this poem is called April Midnight and it reminded me of my experience walking the streets of London late at night. April Midnight by Arthur Simons. Side by side through the streets at midnight, roaming together through the tumultuous night of London in the miraculous April weather. 
Roaming together under the gaslight, days work over. How the spring calls to us here in the city, calls to the heart from the heart of a lover. Cool the wind blows fresh in our faces, cleansing, entrancing, after the heat and the fumes and the footlights. Where you dance and I watch your dancing, Good it is to be here together, good to be roaming, even in London, even at midnight. Lover-like in a lover's gloaming, you the dancer and I the dreamer, children together, wandering lost in the night of London, in the miraculous April weather. So those are my April poems for you. Those are my spring poems that I wanted to share. I hope that you enjoyed them while you were sipping on your beverage. Thank you so much for joining me today for Wine and Words Wednesday. Um, we'll have another program next week. One of my colleagues will be sharing her favorite Earth Day, program, Earth Day poems with you. So you're not gonna wanna miss that. Um, all this month we'll be sharing poems for Wine and Words Wednesday to celebrate National Poetry Month. Um, and we'll be closing out National Poetry Month with a special program on April 30th at 7 p.m. Um, we're going to be having a poetry reading night. Um, so you're not going to want to miss that 7 p.m. Please join us. It's going to be a Zoom meeting. Um, so please join us for that special event. Uh, April 30th at 7 p.m. We're gonna have a special poetry reading where you can join us and either listen in or share some of your favorite poetry um, to um, celebrate the finale of National Poetry Month. So thanks again for joining me today for Wine and Words Wednesday and we'll see you next week. Bye.